the stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, the man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On today's episode, we are going to tackle the fourth Mythos pack from the Dunwich Legacy Cycle. That's right, we are going to go hunt some invisible abominations in Undimensioned and Unseen. I'm going to shake things up a little bit on this playthrough. I'm going to be playing through in standalone mode with Ashcan Pete and his trusty sidekick Duke. The deck I'm going to be using was built by Zoe Glass over at the Drawn to the Flame podcast. I was looking for a deck that I could test uh, Dark Horse, which is one of the survivor cards in Undimensioned and Unseen, and Zoe Glass was kind, of, kind enough to suggest this one. I've had a chance to play it a couple times against various scenarios, and it is a great one. Uh, I will put a link to this deck in the comment section down below so you can have a chance to check that out over at ArkhamDB. And if you haven't had a chance to already, I would highly recommend that you check out the Drawn to the Flame podcast. Peter and Frank do a great job over there and they have a lot of uh, great insights into this great game. And you can find that podcast at drawntotheflamepodcast.blogspot.com. So without further ado, let's get started. We are set up and ready to go here. I've had a chance to play this scenario a couple times since it came out a little more than a week ago, and uh, it is mighty challenging. The, uh, the objective of this scenario is to take down these broods of yogg -Sothoth. They have six combat, one health, and three agility. They are monsters and abominations, massive, and they get plus one health and cannot be damaged or attacked except using the ability on Esoteric Formula. They do two, they will cost you two health and two sanity if they attack you. So the, uh, this scenario is basically divided into two parts. Uh, the first part is to grab one of these esoteric formulas, which is fairly straightforward. And then the second part is to take down as many of the Brood of Yogg-Sothoth as you can. In this case, since I'm playing in standalone mode, I need to take down three of them. And that can be a tall order, because they are not the only monsters in the encounter deck. And uh, there aren't a lot of places to hide if... Uh, if monsters do come out. So uh, in previous playthroughs I've ended up with quite a few. Uh, it's quite easy to get mobbed in this scenario and have uh, way too many monsters to deal with. Ashcan Pete starts in play at the Dunwich Village. It is a two shroud location with three clues. It has the game text resign. You hide from the creatures. And you can also take an action to move a brood of Yogg-Sothoth enemy once toward Dunwich Village. The village is connected to the Blasted Heath, Ten Acre Meadow, and Cold Spring Glen, where our brood of Yogg-Sothoth starts in play. And they are in turn connected to the Waitley Ruins, at least Ten Acre Meadow and Cold Spring Glen are. And then... The Waitley Ruins are connected to the Devil's Hop Yard. So basically, uh, what's going to happen is the, the Broods will be moving around the map and we will be trying to gather clues while that happens. Our agenda is rampaging creatures, reports of terrifying entities wreaking havoc across the countryside have caused the citizens of Dunwich to panic. Worse, the creatures seem to be invisible to the naked eye, and it has the forced effect at the end of the enemy phase, move each brood of Yogg-Sothoth enemy once toward a random location. So in case you're wondering how we choose a random location, uh, the designers were kind enough to include two copies of each of the locations uh, in the encounter set, and so we have our stack of uh, locations over here, and we just shuffle those up and at the enemy at the end of the enemy phase we'll draw one of those to see where the brood of Yogg-Sothoth moves. Our act is 1A Saracenic Script. The monsters tearing through Dunwich County are immune to, to, to traditional weapons. 
Only by reciting a particular incantation can the creatures be defeated. First you must search the ruins of Wilbur Waitley's home in order to find the final sections of the otherworldly script. And it has the objective. Only investigators at Waitley Ruins may spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance. And we will need two clues in order to advance, which will give us the esoteric formula, which is a spell, and it, you may take the action fight. This attack uses willpower instead of combat. You get plus two willpower for this attack for each clue on the attacked enemy. Use this ability only on an abomination enemy. So the esoteric formula is the only way that we can hurt these broods of Yogg-Sothoth. So we will need to get one of those quickly and hopefully uh, take them down. This scenario is similar to Midnight Masks in that uh, it's a scenario where you're simply trying to do the best that you can, uh, and by best meaning take down as many of the broods as you can. Uh, there's, uh, if you resign, you simply have three broods escape, and if you manage to take down one or two of them, then the other one will escape. I'm ready to draw my opening hand. What I'm going to be looking for for Ashcan Pete uh, in this scenario is Peter Sylvester. He's He is huge in this scenario with his plus one willpower and plus one agility. Uh, that makes it that much easier to hit the broods of Yogg-Sothoth as well as to escape them if uh, things go south and you need to get out of there. Uh, that plus one agility can be huge. I'm also going to be looking for my copies of Dark Horse in order to get those into play to further boost Ash Can Pete's willpower and improve his chances of hitting the uh, the broods. So we are ready to draw our opening hand. Let's see how we do here. There is a leather coat. There is Dark Horse. A vicious blow, an unexpected courage, and a fire axe. Hmm, that is an interesting hand. I like the fire axe, the leather coat, and the dark horse, so we'll keep those. We'll pitch the uh, unexpected courage and vicious blow. We draw a perception and a guts, so we will shuffle those back into our deck. And we are ready to begin. So... Dark Horse uh, works if you have no resources in your pool. That shouldn't be too hard to accomplish. So we will... Uh, one of the major concerns when we start our opening turn is that this brood of Yogg-Sothoth at Cold Spring Glen, if we draw a random location, uh, we have two random locations that would be bad, one being the Dunwich Village, in which case the brood will move directly toward us, or Blasted Heath, in which it will have to move to Dunwich Village on its way to Blasted Heath, and in both cases we will end up with a brood that we have to deal with on uh, the second turn, so hopefully we can avoid that scenario. It looks like we are ready to begin, so we will start with the first turn. I'm going to uh, simply play out some cards here. We'll put out the leather coat to give us a little bit more uh, health. We're going to pay one for the fire axe and one for and uh, three for the dark horse. That will be our three actions for the turn, and we will have one resource remaining. Uh, and that will be that. So we need to uh, move this brood around. Let's see where the brood is headed. He is going to stay in Cold Spring Glen for now. So uh, he, he will not move. So that is uh, nice to know. We're going to move to the upkeep phase. We draw a Vicious Blow. We do have Dark Horse, which allows us to not gain resources, uh, should we so desire. I think I'm going to stay at one resource for now, and uh, hopefully we will be, if we draw our Peter Sylvester, we can get him down uh, as quickly as possible. 
we will add a doom and draw our first encounter card of the game, which is a Rotting Remains. It is a test willpower three, and for each point we fail by, we take a horror. Uh, that's why I'd like to get Peter Sylvester out as quickly as possible in uh, this scenario, because the uh, there is quite a bit of horror that you can take, and he can soak that up and get rid of it for you. So that is going to be a four versus three. Normally I would, uh, I might pitch the guts in order to pass this check uh, more easily, but uh, the guts come in very handy when you're when you're trying to hit the uh, broods of Yogg-Sothoth with the esoteric formula. So I'm going to hang on to that for now. So it's going to be a four versus three. Let's see how we do here. That's a minus two, so we are going to take one horror. Uh, we will put that on Duke for now. So that was the Mythos phase. We can move on to the uh, <clears throat> back to uh, Ash Can Pete here. Uh, we need to get some clues and head over to the Waitley Ruins, so we will do that now. We will exhaust Duke to give us a four versus two. Uh, I think we'll pitch the perception to give us a six versus two and we get a minus two so that is one clue and we will draw a card for the perception which is a ward of protection that will come in very handy there are some uh, cards in the encounter deck we definitely want to look at, at uh, cancelling particularly towering beasts which makes the uh, broods that much tougher to kill so I'm glad to see that. Uh, we do have... Uh, now, if I want to ready Duke, I'm going to have to pitch something. And uh, I, I like the hand I've got right now. So I think what I'm going to do is... I'm going to move over to... Uh, well, we could do just uh, two straight up two versus two tests. That's not uh, not great, but uh, let's give it a try. We'll go two versus two. Oh, we get a zero. So hey, that paid off. So we get one and I'm just going to draw a card. Hopefully we can see a Peter Sylvester here sooner than later. That is a manual dexterity. All right, we will go to the enemy phase and we will see where our brood is headed. It is off to the Waitley Ruins. So he will move over here. We will draw a card, which is a preposterous sketches. That is uh, an interesting option. Certainly drawing three cards would help us get Peter sooner than later. So I think I will gain a resource this turn uh, so we can play that on our next turn. We will add a Doom and our next encounter card is a Ruin and Destruction. It is a hazard revelation if there are no investigators at the same location as a Brood of Yongsothoth. Ruin and Destruction gains Surge. So that uh, will surge into something. There is another Rotting Remains. So again, it is a four versus three. We will simply take that, and that is a tablet, which is a zero. You must either remove all clue tokens from a Brood of Yogg-Sothoth in play, or this token is a minus four instead. Ouch, that is going to hurt. So we are a zero versus three. So we ended up taking three horror there. That is bad news. Ouch, I don't like that at all. That's no good. All right, well, that, uh, that really hurts. We will play our uh, preposterous sketches as our first action to draw three cards because there is a clue at our location. We get a Lucky, our second copy of Dark Horse, and another Perception. 
As our second action, I'm going to exhaust Duke and pitch a perception to gain, we'll make it a six versus two, and that is a zero. And we draw a card for perception, which is an unexpected courage. We've got one action left. Um, perhaps we will move up to the blasted heath as our, as our final action there. It is a three shroud location with two clues and it has the forced effect at the end of your turn if you are in blasted heath take one damage. Man, I don't like that at all. Come on, game. All right, well, it is the end of our turn, so we are going to take a damage, unfortunately. We uh, can draw a car. We've got to move our brood first. So let's see where he is off to. The brood is headed toward Dunwich Village. We have a choice of moving him to Ten Acre Meadow or Cold Spring Glen. I think we'll put him in the Glen for now. We can draw a card. There is another Guts. And we have the option of gaining a resource. I think I will gain a resource because I do want to be able to play this Ward of Protection should uh, something terrible happen out of the encounter deck. We will add a Doom and draw an encounter card, which is the Lupine Thrall. It has four combat, three health, and four agility. It is a creature, monster, and abomination. It spawns at the farthest location from you, and its prey is the lowest uh, agility. It is a hunter and has retaliate and does one damage and one sanity should it attack you. So the farthest location from us is probably Cold Spring Glen. Uh, one, two to Waitley Ruins, one, two to Cold Spring Glen. So we will dump it in Cold Spring Glen. All right, that is that. We will ready Duke. We do want to get out of uh, the Blasted Heath because we do not want to be taking more damage. So I think what I'm going to do is exhaust Duke and move to the Devil's Hop Yard. We will flip that over. It is a one shroud location with two clues and it has the free trigger. You lure the creature into the thick fog. An investigator in Devil's Hopyard may place up to two of his or her clues on an abomination enemy in Devil's Hopyard group limit once per game. Obviously that is very helpful for us because if we are able to place the clues on the Brood of Yogg-Sothoth, that will improve our chances of hitting it with the esoteric formula. We do have an investigate check to finish off here. We are four versus one. Let's see how we do. That is a minus four. That is uh, not great, again. All right, well, we, uh, we missed the, the one that we should probably have nailed, but uh, we will pitch our second copy of Dark Horse in order to ready Duke and try it again. Four versus one, <laughs> and there's an auto fail. Boy, the uh, clues at the Devil's Hopyard are well hidden. All right, I guess we'll go two versus one. And we get a plus one, of course, the hardest check. We, we managed to sail, breeze through that one. All right, well, I'm hoping to grab this last clue and then we'll be in a position to move to the Waitley Ruins as long as uh, the brood of Yogg-Sothoth does not head there. We are going to have to deal with this Lupine Thrall at some point in the near future. Those were our three actions. We need to move some monsters around here. 
Let's see where the brew goes first of all. It is heading up to 10 Acre Meadow. And the Lupine Thrall moves to the Waitley Ruins. We will add a Doom and draw our next encounter card, which is Eager for Death. Test 2 Willpower increases skills difficult tests difficulty by 1 for each damage on you. So that will be a 3 versus 4. So let's see how we do there. That's a 0, so we pass that without too much trouble. All right. We would like to grab this clue at the Devil's Hopyard, but we also need to kill this Lupine Thrall. Uh, which, uh, before it attacks us, so perhaps, what can we do? We could kill it in one shot, potentially with the Fire Axe. If we gained, that would be two combat. We'd add two for the skill test. That'd be four. We'd get another one, five. Five versus four, and then we would need to pitch a vicious blow in order to take it down in one shot. So we are going to do that. We will move to the Waitley Ruins as our first action, engaging the Lupine Thrall. We will use the free trigger on fire axe to spend one resource to get plus two combat for this skill test. Bringing our combat to four and we get plus one from dark horse and we will pitch the vicious blow in order to give us another one so that will put us at six and we will be doing two damage if we hit it. Now, Chaos Bag, we really need this check, so I would really appreciate it if you could uh, help us out here. <laughs> the Chaos Bag. Minus four, so that is a miss. That is a, a big problem. All right, let's... Uh, we have one action left. That uh, really hurt. Okay, if we hit it, we can do... Well, we're going to have to pitch an Unexpected Courage. Or we use Duke, which could put us at a 6. Uh, actually, that would put us slightly better than a 6. It would put us at a 7. So we will pitch the Unexpected Courage using Duke to attack. And uh, so that will be 4, 5, 6, and 7 with Dark Horse. And we do manage to hit it that time, barely. So we will do a couple of damage to the Lupine Thrall. Unfortunately, we are going to take some damage from it when it attacks us. Oh, we forgot to flip over the uh, Waitley Ruins here. It's a two-shroud location with two clues per investigator. And uh, if each investigator in Waitley Ruins gets minus one willpower, and you can take an action to test four. If you are successful, move a brood of Yogg-Sothoth enemy one location in any direction. All right, we need to deal with an attack from the Lupine Thrall. I'm going to do one damage to Duke, and he will also take the Sanity hit. We need to move our brood. See where he is going. Whoops, we have our 10 acre meadow on the table, so we will have to redo that. The brood is headed toward Cold Spring Glen. 
thank goodness, because he could have easily come to Waitley Ruins, and that would have been a a disaster for us. Okay. It is our turn. It's uh, our upkeep phase. We will draw a card. Now, do we want a resource? We do have the lucky, which could be important, and we do have the ward of protection, so I think we do want a resource this turn. Unfortunately, we are going to advance our agenda, so that will flip. Calamity strikes. An old pickup truck rolls to a stop along the weathered trails of Dunwich. The driver, Joe Osborne, calls out to you through a shattered driver's side window, the truck's engine still running. It's over at the Eric's farm, he shouts. Dunn blasted their place apart. Poor Henry and Martha. You ask Osborne for the location of the Eric's homestead, and it confirms your worst fear. For that attack to have occurred recently, there must be more of the monsters on the loose. So we shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. First of all. And then we spawn one of the set-aside brood of Yogg-Sothoth enemies at a random location on the table. So this brood is also in Cold Spring Glen. Uh-oh, they are, uh, they have formed a pack. There is a pack of broods wandering the uh, Dunwich County. That is bad news. Because now, if they both happen to move to Waitley Ruins, we are in deep, deep trouble. Uh, we need to pull our next agenda out, which is biding its time. Once in a while a wind sweeping up out of Cold Spring Glen would bring a touch of ineffable fetor to the heavy night air, but the looked-for terror did not appear. Whatever was down there in the glen was biding its time, and Armitage told his colleagues it would be suicidal to try to attack it in the dark. H.P. Lovecraft, The Dunwich Horror. I did listen to The Dunwich Horror on an audiobook of The Dunwich Horror, which really puts you in the mood to, uh, to play this scenario. And this agenda has the forced effect at the end of the enemy phase. Move each brood of Yogg-Sothoth enemy once towards a random location. We do need to draw an encounter card, which is an unhallowed country. We put that into play in our threat area, and that will blank Duke. We cannot play ally assets, and we have to pre treat Duke's text box as though it were blank. At the end of our turn, we may test willpower three. If we succeed, discard the unhallowed country. Unfortunately, we are at the Waitley Ruins, which gives us minus one willpower, so we may be pitching one of those guts to uh, help us get through this. We do have this Lupine Thrall to deal with first. Uh, do we have anything else we can use? If we use the fire axe, we're at a duke is blank. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, we will spend a resource off the uh, to boost our fire axe to four. We get a five because of dark horse. Uh, unfortunately, that is really all I can do. So it is going to be a five versus four. Those are not great odds. So let's see how we do here. That is a cultist, which is reveal another token. And if you fail this test, you take one horror. All right, it's a zero, woo! Oh, that was close. Okay, we do pass the test. We do not take a horror, and we kill the Lupine Thrall. 
That is great news. Okay, we have uh, we can advance this agenda. We can advance our act for starters. So we can spend our two clues to flip our act. It is obtaining the formula. Now you have to check your campaign log. If Dr. Armitage survived the Dunwich legacy, you read the first part. If he was listed under the Sacrifice to Yogg-Sothoth section, you have to use the second part. Since we're playing in standalone mode, we have to use the second part. And it is, using the information contained within the ruins of the Waitley homestead, you are able to transcribe the remainder of the formula previously used by Dr. Armitage to destroy the beast that plagued Dunwich. However, the endeavor sets you back several hours. Each investigator puts into play one set-aside esoteric formula, and we have to place one doom on our current agenda because it took us a little longer than we had hoped. So we will do that. Act 2A is they must be destroyed. With the formula in hand, you finally have the means to destroy the creatures wreaking havoc in Dunwich, but only if you can survive long enough. And the objective is to defeat as many Brood of Yogg-Sothoth enemies as you can. If there are no copies of Brood of Yogg-Sothoth in play or set aside, we advance. Okay, we've got two actions left. Now, it wouldn't be a terrible thing if one of the broods came to us this turn because we could uh, well, we can't put any clues on it, unfortunately. That's the big issue. And we don't have our Peter Sylvester to boost our willpower, and we are suffering minus one willpower. So I'm not entirely sure whether hanging out at the Waitley Ruins is our best bet. Uh, let's move out of the Waitley Ruins. Uh, we will move up to... I think we're going to move to the Ten Acre Meadow. It is a two-shroud location with three clues, and it has the free trigger. You set a bait using a live animal. Each investigator in Ten Acre Meadow may place one of his or her clues on an abomination enemy in Ten Acre Meadow, so we can boost our uh, attack against them, and that is a group limit once per game. One action left. We will do an investigate test. Uh, unfortunately, Duke is blank still. We will get rid of that. Let's draw a card instead. There is our... That was a bad decision. There is our weakness, internal injury. We put it into play in our threat area, and at the end of your turn, we take one direct damage. Nothing we can do about that, unfortunately. We will be taking one direct damage. And we have a chance to get rid of Unhallowed Country. Fortunately, we are at... Uh, we, are no, we are no longer at the Waitley Ruins, so we uh, can uh, use our full willpower. So we get five versus three. Uh, do we pitch the guts or hang on to it? Duke isn't really essential at the moment. So we will just try it straight up. That is a reveal another token, and if we fail, we take a horror. And it's zero again, so we do get rid of the unhallowed country. We need to move the broods. Let's see where they go. Brood number one which is closest to the uh, location. He will stay at Cold Spring Glen. And brood number two, he is headed over to Dunwich Village. So he will move over here. Now, we don't have a way of placing clues. Maybe Cold Spring Glen is the way to do it. 
Hmm. How much damage could we take from internal injury? Because what I'm thinking here is that if I move down to Cold Spring Glen, if it has a free trigger that I can put uh, clues on the brood, I could dump a clue on him and I would be in a good position to uh, take it down because I have the guts. What would that be? I'd be at a four. I'd be five with Dark Horse. I'd be six, seven, eight, nine. I'd need to hit it twice to kill it. So it is possible. It is possible to do. We may have to take that risk. We do get to uh, gain a resource and a card though, first of all. We will draw our card, which is another leather coat, and we will gain a resource just in case we need to use our Ward of Protection. Okay, we add a doom. Let's see what the encounter deck has in store for us. There are the Whippoorwills. All right, well, that changes our plans somewhat because we now have to deal with these Whippoorwills before we can deal with the, uh, the broods. Unfortunately, we, well, yeah, we're gonna take direct damage, which means we can't dump it on the leather coat. Hmm, well, the problem is if we get jumped by the broods here with the whooper wills, that is, that could be uh, a fatal, fatal uh, decision. So we will have to engage the whooper wills, I think. And we will attack them. We have a, th we are a one. If we attack with Duke, we'd be at three. We could spend one for Scrapper, which would put us at four and five. So we will do that. We will spend a resource for Scrapper, which will put us at uh, three, four, and we'll get one more from Dark Horse, which is five versus two. and we get a minus one. So the Whooper Wills are dead. And I think we're gonna draw, draw a card. Yeah, let's do that. There's an unexpected courage. And we're gonna have to take another damage from our internal injury. The broods are on the move. Let's see where they go. Let's deal with the one in Dunwich Village first of all. He is headed up to the Blasted Heath. And the brood in Cold Spring Glen heads back to the Waitley Ruins. Okay, so we will draw a card. There is our survival instinct and gain a resource. We do need to pitch something, however. Uh, I'm gonna pitch the look what I found for now. We will add a doom. The encounter deck, there is the towering beasts. That I am gonna cancel with ward of protection. Take a horror. Uh, the Towering Beasts has Peril, and you attach it to a Brood of Yonksathoth enemy in play. If that enemy is at your location, you take one damage. Attached enemy gets plus one fight and plus one health, so that just makes the Broods that much tougher to take down, so I am, I'm quite happy to cancel that. So the Broods are at least a little more manageable. I think we need to take our double action to get rid of the internal injury. 
and then where do we want to be to uh, we can place a clue at 10 acre meadow so I think we're gonna wait here Duke is gonna we'll do a an investigate check uh, it is a four versus two and we get a minus one so that is great news we will grab a clue and that will end our turn the march of the broods let's deal with the one at the blasted heath he is headed toward the waitley ruins and the one at the waitley ruins is going to ten acre meadow all right he is with us. We have encountered our first brood. All right. So our goal will be to kill this thing this turn, if we can manage it. We will draw a card. There is another ward of protection and we will gain a resource, I believe. Duke is ready, and we move to the Mythos phase. We will add a Doom and Dissonant Voices. Put Dissonant Voices into play in your threat area. You cannot play assets or events at the end of the round. Discard Dissonant Voices. That's not terrible. We can't play events, but we uh, we weren't planning on it either, so most of what we have are skills. All right, so first of all, what we're going to do is take the free trigger to set a bait using a live animal to place a clue on this brood. Now we get plus two with our esoteric formula. So we are currently at four, five, six versus six. Uh, we will go seven, eight. We will pitch a guts to give us an eight versus six. We do have a lucky, but we cannot play it. Ouch. Eight versus six. What does the chaos bag have here? We've got minus one, so that would be, the skull would be a minus two. The cultist is basically reveal a token. The tablet would be a zero unless we removed our clue, in which case it would be minus four. We could remove the clue, which would drop us by two, which would be okay. Seven, eight. So we would be okay there. And the elder thing would probably be our worst because that's a minus three. And uh, the, bro the brood would immediately attack us. Tough choice here. Do we pitch the unexpected courage? So we really need to be at a minus three to guarantee that this attack hits. The other option, since we can't play the lucky, would be to burn a resource using Scrapper, in which case our Dark Horse would tick in and we'd get another one, so we would be at seven or nine versus six. I think that's what we'll do. Nine versus six. Here we go, big, big pull here. Minus three, I'm glad we did that. That is a hit. We do one damage to the brood and we get to draw a card for our guts, which is a look what I found. We will attack it again, pitching our second copy of guts to give us a four, five, six, seven, eight, nine versus 
six and there's a skull that's a minus two so we kill the brood Yeeha! all right going down in a ball of flames that's what i like to see and we get to add that brood to our victory display that is really good news and uh, before we forget let's draw a card with guts that's a vicious blow that could help us take down the other brood okay things just got a little bit easier um, the big problem right now is that we do have when we ad advance to agenda 3a we are going to have our uh, uh, another brood is going to come out so that is going to be a big issue and that brood attacks you immediately so we need to be prepared for that we do have one action left we uh, Let's see, do we want to, we need to find a spot to kill the next brood. So it's either going to be Cold Spring Glen or, yeah, Cold Spring Glen or the Devil's Hop Yard, probably. Let's use Duke. We're going to take an action and move here. Cold Spring Glen is a two shroud location with zero clues per investigator. Each enemy in Cold Spring Glen gets minus one evade. It has the response trigger after Cold Spring Glen is chosen as a random location an investigator in Cold Spring Glen tests agility three. If successful, choose a different random location. This means there is only one location in the game where we can put clue tokens on abominations, and that is the Devil's Hop Yard. So that is where we are going to need to go. We do have an investigate test to finish. It's not going to matter very much. I don't think there's... Yeah, the only one that we could run into problems with is taking a horror from the cultist, but let's see what we do. That's a minus one. That's fine. Okay. So we need to get up to the Devil's Hop Yard in order to take down the next brood. The easiest way to get there is through the Waitley Ruins, but we've got this other brood in the way. Okay. Well, we get to get rid of the dissonant voices, so that's nice. Let's see where the brood is moving. Oh, we have our 10 acre meadow on the table. Shuffle those back up and the brood is going to stay at the Devil's Hop Yard for the time being. We will draw a card. There is a Kukri. That isn't going to be a whole lot of help to us at the moment. Uh, we will add a. Re we are going to gain a resource because we do have a Ward of Protection, and we need to discard one card. That will be the Kukri. It's not going to help us at all this game. We will add a Doom and draw an Encounter card. There is another copy of Dissonant Voices. Okay. So we need to choose where we are going to be very carefully because we are going to advance the agenda and we are going to end up with another brood coming out. The question is, are we in a position to kill it if it comes? We've got a four, five with Dark Horse. 
six, seven with our unexpected courage. We could pitch a vicious blow to do two damage to it. Yeah, we could uh, we could muster the power to kill the brood. It's just a matter of where we want to be. We cannot go to the Waitley ruins. That is not going to work. Um, the blasted heath. We just take damage, so we don't want to be hanging out there. Um, hmm, not really many good options. I think we will move to the Dunwich Village and we will draw a couple uh, draw a couple cards. Let's see. There's another Kukri. And what else do we have? We've got eight cards left. We haven't seen our signature weakness yet. That could, uh, that's not really going to affect us all that much considering Duke isn't all that helpful right now. So let's draw another card here. That is another lucky. Okay, so that will end our turn. Uh, we could use the lucky though when we have this upcoming test. So we will get rid of the dissonant voices. First of all, then we will move the brood. Shuffle the brood up and he's headed over to the blasted heath. Okay. So our real goal here is to ambush the broods at the Devil's Hop Yard. We can go one, two, three to get there. Should we need to. Uh, I am going to gain, we do get to draw a card. There's Peter, okay. Okay, we do need him. We have to discard three cards, the Kukri, the Look What I Found, and the Second Leather Coat can all go. I am going to gain a resource. And we are going to be advancing. So we will add a Doom and we advance our agenda. First, we have to shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. We will do that now. Make sure there are no other cards. There are a couple down here. And if there is a set aside brood of Yogg-Sothoth, the lead investigator reads the following out loud. Bleak storm clouds churn overhead and a blanket of rain pelts the countryside. As the downpour grows in intensity, you take refuge in a half-ruined shack nearby. There is a flash of lightning, and in the brief illumination, you spot the outline of, some th of something large in the rain. Without warning, the distant trees bend, though nothing seems to be bending them. Moments later, a force with the strength of a truck crashes into your refuge. Spawn one of the set-aside brood of Yogg-Sothoth enemies at the lead investigator's location if able. Then each investigator at that location tests for agility. The newly spawned brood makes an attack against in each investigator who fails that test. So this brood shows up in the Dunwich village. Okay. So we have a huge agility test to make here. We are at three. We do have a manual dexterity to push us up to five. 
We have a survival instinct which could push us up to six. So what do we need? It's six, it would be six, four. The skull would be fine. The, uh, the tablet is a huge issue. The tablet is the biggest, so we really want to be at minus three to make sure. This is not an evasion attempt, so the, uh, we really want to be at minus four, I think, to make sure we get, we nail this. So we are at three, four, five. Uh, we'd need to be at eight if we want to, but we do have the lucky. We're going to pitch the survival instinct. That will put us at uh, six versus four. And if we happen to draw, we have a lucky that we can use in order to uh, boost us up as necessary. Let's see what the chaos bag has to say about it. That's a minus two. So that is a success. Whew. Okay, that was a huge, huge, uh, that was great because now we're in a, we advance to agenda 3A, which is Horrors Unleashed. It was no joke tracking down something as big as a house that one could not see, but that had all the vicious malevolence of a demon. HP Lovecraft, the Dunwich Horror. Each abomination enemy gets plus one fight and plus one evade, and at the end of the enemy phase, move each brood to a random location. All right, we need to try to take down this brood this turn. He is going to be a seven, though. That is not going to be easy. Uh, we do have to draw an encounter card first of all, so let's see what uh, let's see what the encounter deck has to offer. There is a towering beasts again. Okay. Interesting choice here. I do want to cancel that because I do not want, I really do not want the, these uh, broods to be any tougher than they already are. So I am going to cancel that, spend a resource. Now, where do I put the sanity. Do I put it on myself or do I put it on Duke? I will put it on myself. There are rotting remains in the deck. That could kill us right out. If I sacrifice the Duke now, we are really done investigating because we don't need any more clues. The best we can do is dump two clues on one of the abominations at the Devil's Hopyard, so we don't need clues. I'm going to sacrifice Duke. I hate to do it, but Duke will uh, take the horror, I think. I just want to make sure that uh, he ended up in the discard pile here. Yes, he did. All right. We have a brood to take down here. We are at four. He is a seven. Four. Pitch the Unexpected Courage, 5-6. We just don't quite have enough. Oh, we did succeed at that uh, a test, so we do have to draw a card. There is our Racked by Nightmares. 
That's fine. That doesn't matter. Duke's already dead. We're at four, five, six. This thing is at seven. That would lead us to be a minus one. Do we pitch Duke at this point, or do we pitch Peter Sylvester to a test? That would put us at seven versus seven, and we would still have the lucky in our back pocket. It's a risk, but we're going to have to do it. We're going to pitch Peter. We will take the uh, seven versus seven. We're also going to pitch this vicious blow. It's not going to help the test, but it will deal plus one damage. So if we are fortunate, we can take it down. Let's see how we do. Minus three. Oh, that's just one too far. Oh, how terrible. We miss. That was our shot. That was our shot, and we just came up short. If we had drawn one less, a minus two would have been just fine. Oh, that's tragic. Okay, so it's going to be a seven, four, Yeah, that was our shot. That was our shot, I'm afraid. So now we have the choice. We need to maybe get away from it. Plus one evade. So it's a four. The best we can do is five. Hmm. If we evade it and move away, we could maybe set up another kill at the Devil's Hop Yard. Alright, so we're going to go 4 and 5 with Dark Horse. Yeah, this could be game right here if we can't get away from this thing. Alright. Oh, and there's the auto fail. That's painful. That hurts. Okay, well, now we're just four versus four. Four versus four. Yeah, not liking it. Chaos Bay. Well, even if we do evade it, we well, we won't take damage at least. That's a minus two. So that is a failure. Oh, that's heartbreaking. We had a shot at taking down a brood, and unfortunately the brood will end up taking us down. We will take the two sanity and the two damage, and that will end the game, unfortunately. We came so close to taking down two broods and possibly setting up the third because we did have the uh, the clues to do it. Well, that is going to do it for the playthrough of uh, Undimensioned and Unseen. Some of you may remember uh, during my playthrough of Blood on the Altar I described that that uh, scenario as difficult. Well, the designers have really upped the uh, ante in this one. I've played this uh, a few times now, and I find this uh, this scenario really challenging. It is uh, it is very easy to get mobbed by broods and thralls and whippoorwills and all manner of monsters, and uh, it can be very. While the broods only have two health, that six combat is uh, pretty tough to crack sometimes, uh, especially if you don't have enough cards to pitch to the tests, or you don't have, in this case, 
uh, I didn't draw, I only draw, I only drew two of the locations that allow you to put clues on uh, on the broods, which is makes it a little more difficult. And because I'm playing in standalone mode, you don't get to start with the powder of Ibn Ghazi, which uh, you get to put clues, you do have some clues handy that you can put on exhausted broods. So Pete will be taken down this game. I do, uh, I like this scenario, it's it's very challenging. Uh, hopefully you are having better luck that with it than I am. The best I've done so far is uh, I've managed to take down two broods I can't uh, seem to, to get that third one down. Unfortunately, in this game, we are only going to take down one. Uh, things might have been different had we had uh, Peter Sylvester out. He is just so critical to, uh, to how this uh, Ash Can Pete deck functions in this particular scenario because of that extra willpower he provides. And not seeing him until, you know, I think... There were two of them in the uh, final ten cards of my deck. Yeah, there was one Peter Sylvester. He was the second last card in the deck, so not seeing him until late was uh, really unfortunate. And just drawing the minus three, that sucks. That really sucks because I had a lucky in hand. I was ready to, to pitch it if we'd drawn pretty much almost any other token would have been better than that one. Uh, the only other tokens were the tablet, the uh, elder thing. So we had a really good chance of succeeding there and taking down that brood. Unfortunately, it just didn't happen. That's going to do it for me today. If you enjoyed this playthrough, I'd appreciate it if you could leave me a thumbs up. If you notice that I made any mistakes or you just want to chat about this great game, please leave a comment down below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to be notified of when I release future content. If you'd like to drop me a line, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there and happy investigating.